Hey everybody, it's me, Marty, also known as P-Dog Knight on the internet, and welcome back to the P-Dog Knight channel. Today, uh, we're going to read another Twitter thread, this one by our friend Jeff, who goes by at Protein Wisdom on Twitter.com. An observation. People outside the Beltway political establishment who look at the graves in Arlington and wonder if they would have had the stones to potentially pay the ultimate sacrifice are people who are behaving as any genuine person would. While the media and political insiders get to work spinning this show of actual humanity as an anti-soldier character flaw, you have every right to ignore their fake political bluster. Political outsiders who ponder such enormities, as it turns out, are less likely to send our sons and daughters into far-flung lands to fight for nebulous principles in forever wars, often with rules of engagement so restrictive that killing the enemy they are pointed toward leads to murder trials spurred on by political insiders who supported the war, but who likewise would wish to use soldiers as props to appease their anti-war base. It is precisely because I never served that I've come to revere those who paid the ultimate price and to question the wisdom and motives of those who ordered them into harm's way. So, when I hear that Donald Trump Jr. or Donald Trump look at the graves of the fallen and experience genuine human emotions, I'm not all that upset. Just the opposite, in fact. It shows me that they understand human complexity and are willing to examine their own feelings so as to have a deeper and more substantive idea of the gravity of the decisions presidents are charged with. Now, the Hollywood left spent years after Vietnam making movies depicting grunts as unlucky soldiers foisted into a war that they didn't understand. This became the cultural backdrop for contextualizing that police action in public perception and history. It begot a particular narrative that informed politics for decades. Today, fighting communists over there seems like a futile gesture in retrospect, but not only because, as we're seeing now, we have been largely impotent in fighting them here at home, where they infuse themselves into every important cultural, social, and political institution in our country. So no, I'm not going to disparage Trump or others who honestly examine the consequences of sending young people off to die only to recognize that the real enemy lies within. Trump is fighting a leftist prophet media, institutionalized critical race theory, and a bogus history created in the Marxist fever dreams of otherwise entirely unimpressive academics, and a permanent bureaucratic establishment that quite literally sees the presidency as an honorary title while presuming themselves to dictate State Department, Department of Justice, and military policy. Trump has upset that order. He's insisted that the voters who elected him have their voices heard and the policies they support put in place. Trump doesn't hide behind platitudes and faux patriotism of the kind people like Jeff Goldberg and his cabal of an anonymous insiders pretend the president must embrace. Trump is not a politician, and we're all the better off for it. All that is, except for the status quo loving insiders who get rich as public servants while allowing Marxism to fester, grow, and then work its way through institutions and then the streets, with the aim of being to gut the middle class, the small business owner, and the individual himself. The destruction of the middle class creates more people dependent on government. It creates a country of the very wealthy and very powerful who have full control over the newly dependent and poor. Cloward Piven laid this all out. Regardless of party affiliation, one thing is true. The insider establishment, the swamp and those who feed off of it, does not care about you individually. They care about themselves and their own power and influence. Trump is the bull in the china shop who, with the perspective of an outsider has seen what many of us who held our noses for McCain or Romney have long understood. Voting for any career politician will bring little change. We are their perverse playthings. For all his brusqueness, Trump, through, though a showman, is surprisingly real. I didn't vote for him in 2016. I wrote in Ted Cruz, who I still think would have made a great president, 
but he was unlikely to win. Just a personal side note, I didn't vote for Trump either. I wrote in the, the sweet meteor of death. In 2020, I'm proudly voting for Trump. He is the reality that has upset the DC matrix. He's exposed that pixelated underbelly of the status quo, which is meant to pleasure the entrenched power brokers, not ordinary Americans. Recognize this before it's too late. Take the red pill. And that's the thread. Tell me what you think about that down in the comments section. And if you uh, want to support the channel, just read down there and you'll see the links where you can do that too. Thank you for watching. My name is P-Dog Knight. And I'm out of here. Bye-bye. Hey, this is P-Dog Knight. And thank you for watching today on the P-Dog Knight channel. If you have an observation or remark you'd like to make about this video or my channel, I absolutely welcome you to write it in the comment section down below. I really look forward to hearing from you. And before you go, if you like what you saw but you're not already subscribed, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and definitely click that bell that pops up afterward so you'll be notified when I post new videos or when we go live. I broadcast my live show, The Morning Night Live, Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. A special thank you to all supporters of this channel who share our videos on social media and who make donations through the Streamlabs link, which is also in the description down below. Thanks again, and until next time, I'm P Dog Knight, and I'm out of here.